This was a 25 minute drive from Grand Teton National Park. This is the south entrance. We're gonna see as much as we can see today. So Yellowstone is comprised of two loops. The southern one is a big loop. The northern one is a smaller loop. Honestly, there's more to see on the northern loop, but you should check out both. We're gonna start on the southern loop and kind of make a crazy eight up and down. West Thumb Geyser Basin, it's gonna be your first stop after the south entrance. All of Yellowstone is over like a thermal plate. There's a super volcano actually here, heating water to come up through these vents and it creates these pools. What gives the pools the color are different bacteria. Each color is a different species of bacteria and each color is a different temperature. So the blues, I believe, are the hottest because those are usually in the middle. And then as they space out, you get the yellows and the orange and the browns, but not just the pools are hot. The ground around it is hot, which is why you have these boardwalks so that you're not walking on the ground. The ground is very unstable, and you can tell by the animal footprints that it's very soft. You'll sink right into it. Something that's really common in Yellowstone is if you see a huge traffic backup, there's probably an animal either on the side of the road or right in the middle. So although most of the time you see a traffic back up, you're like, what's going on? Here, it's way more exciting. We're approaching Hayden Valley. I've been to Yellowstone three times now and I have never not seen bison here. Falls Overlook. We're gonna take the trail down. This is also called the Grand Canyon of Yellowstone. For some reason, the title Grand Canyon of Yellowstone is not on the map. You gotta look for the signs. It's Upper Falls and Lower Falls. I don't know about the cars, what about me? Norris Geyser Basin is home to Steamboat Geyser, which is the tallest geyser in the entire world. I don't think it shoots off in any regularity, but maybe we'll be lucky. So it looked like people were camped out there waiting for the big eruption that can be as high as 300 feet. The last major eruption was four days ago at 3 a.m. So it is very unpredictable and it just happens. You can see minor eruptions, which I think we did see that are anywhere between 10 and 40 feet. A little less exciting. After a few of many stops that we have planned, we are now going to leave the west entrance of Yellowstone, try to find a place to sleep, and head back as early as we can tomorrow morning. You've 
been out here waiting with me the whole time? I made you coffee. <laughs> They do call it Old Faithful because it does erupt in regular intervals. Today the prediction was at 8.02 a.m. and it erupted around 8.15. So it's not exact. It's pretty close. Moving on. <laughs> like walking to death. Uncomfortable. We're at Midway Geyser Basin. This is one of the main spots. So you can see the Grand Prismatic Spring. One of the big pools and the most colorful. It does pay to get here early because there are far fewer people than normal. However, the sun is not very high in the sky right now, so I'm not sure that the colors are gonna be as bright as they normally are. But we're about to find out. about a half mile back towards Old Faithful to Fairy Falls Trailhead. This trail is supposed to give you a bird's eye view of the Grand Prismatic Spring. Definitely worth the small hike up. This stop is Mammoth Hot Springs. It's one of those places where you see it on the side of the road and you think, what is that? I need to stop. Here at Mammoth Hot Springs, there are hot springs just like many other places here at Yellowstone. Except here it's much more slow moving, much slower release. The water coming up has dissolved limestone and sodium bicarbonate in it. Those minerals are deposited as they reach the surface and it creates this white buildup that you see all around the springs. I'm sure it's because the ground here is so unstable, but these are some of the most rickety boardwalks I've ever walked on. There's nails sticking up, everything's all wobbly. into the early 1900s, the park was maintained by the U.S. Army Corps. One of the Army Corps engineers decided that the north entrance wasn't grand enough, so he commissioned this arch. And it worked because we came all the way here to the north today to see it. The top says, for the benefit and the enjoyment of the people. This line was written in the original legislation of Yellowstone. Roosevelt did lay a hexagonal cornerstone to the arch, but it's not like labeled or anything, I don't think. So I'm not quite sure which one it was. It also holds a time capsule from when he placed it. Thank you, Yellowstone, and goodbye. We have just left Yellowstone and we are now making our way to Glacier National Park. 
My personal favorite, although I've never been there, it's been number one on my national park list for a very long time and we are both very excited.